Another Russian artillery depot was set on fire in a successful operation by Ukrainian forces. France will deliver Mirage 2000 fighter jets to Ukraine in the first quarter of 2025. Ukrainian fighters targeted a Russian $60 million Castor radar system in a precision strike in the Luhansk region. Hi, I'm Daniel Kosoy, and this is United24 Media. Ukrainian unmanned system forces targeted a Russian artillery depot in the Bryansk region that, among other weaponry, was stockpiling munitions from North Korea. The operation was confirmed by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. On the night of October 9th, the first reports of explosions poured in from local residents in the town of Karachev, while the Russian Ministry of Defense stated that at least 24 drones were intercepted over the region. A fire broke out at the 67th arsenal of the main missile and artillery directorate, which was also amassing guided aerial bombs. Additional details are still being corroborated, reported the general staff. Two people were killed in Kharkiv when Russian troops attacked the city with six guided aerial bombs on October 8th. Another seven civilians were injured, among them a 10-year-old boy. As a result of the shelling, 15 apartment buildings were damaged. Windows, doorways, and balconies were blown out by the blast waves. We were just behind the house. I was walking with my child when we heard something rustling, something flying in the sky. I grabbed my kid and we ran closer to home. And I just sat down. We managed to sit down. I covered my kid with my arms. The pop hit my ears and tears fell. We were sitting there for a long time. I didn't know where to go, right, left, or whether it was possible to go anywhere at all. One bomb hit an open area in the Saltivsky district. Unfortunately, two people were killed as they were passing by, another five guided aerial bombs. One hit Cherkask Kalozova in Kharkiv district, and the rest were also in suburban areas of Kharkiv. Earlier that day, Russian forces hit a civilian enterprise in Kharkiv. At least 28 people were injured. To follow the latest news from Ukraine, subscribe to our YouTube channel. July 2024 became the deadliest month for civilians in Ukraine since October 2022. This was reported by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk. He underlined that the increase is due to the July 8th large-scale coordinated attack by the Russian Federation against targets across Ukraine. Other reasons are the continued missile, drone, and aerial bomb strikes and assaults by Russian armed forces seeking to capture further Ukrainian territory. This war has quickly become a tragic, flagrant example of the devastation of war on people, the environment, and a common future, leaving a legacy of trauma and loss for generations to come. July 2024 was the deadliest month for civilians in Ukraine since October 2022. Between June and August, my office verified 45% more civilian casualties than in the previous three-month period. According to the UN report, at least 219 civilians were killed and 1,018 injured in July in Ukraine. The high number of victims of that month continues a trend of increasing civilian casualties since March 2024. NATO is returning to its primary mission, Deterrence and Defense, stated Finnish President Alexander Stubb. During a joint press conference in Brussels with the newly appointed Secretary General, Mark Rutte, he emphasized the importance of collective defense for stability in Europe. I firmly believe that we are now witnessing the creation of NATO 3.0. Uh, we are back to the original role of NATO as a deterrence uh, and a strong military alliance um, uh, with uh, a threat coming uh, from uh, the East, mainly from Russia. We have a very common understanding inside the alliance about our security challenges. And the Finnish president also reaffirmed Finland's commitment to contributing to regional security alongside its NATO allies. Meanwhile, Ruta stated that he and Stubb discussed Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. NATO must and will do more to help Ukraine. Russia continues to carry out massive strikes against Ukraine's critical energy infrastructure. 
Ukraine could be facing its toughest winter since the full-scale invasion began. I pay tribute to the resilience and the bravery of the Ukrainian people and their armed forces. Ukrainian defense forces destroyed a Russian OSA mobile air defense system, which cost Moscow $10 million to manufacture, reported the Southern Defense Forces on October 8th. The OSA was the first mobile air defense missile system designed in the Soviet Union, incorporating its own engagement radars on a single vehicle, intercepting aerial targets at ranges of around 15 kilometers and altitudes of up to 10 kilometers. Germany has delivered two IRIS-T air defense systems to Ukraine. This was reported by the German Major General Christian Freuding in an interview with R&D, where he promises two more systems will be delivered by the end of the year. He also added that Germany is planning to send infantry fighting vehicles and main battle tanks along with a five to six digit number of artillery munitions in the same time frame. France will deliver Mirage 2000 fighter jets to Ukraine in the first quarter of 2025. They will be equipped with the latest systems for fighting and resisting electronic warfare. This was reported by the French Defense Minister Sebastian Le Cornu. He underlined that the training program for the Ukrainian pilots is ongoing. The Mirage 2000 is a French fighter jet similar to the American F-16. Both are powered by a single engine. This enhances maneuverability and simplifies maintenance, but also reduces reliability, meaning if the engine fails, there's no backup. Ukraine received 122 tons of ammunition. The funding was made with donations from Slovak residents who wanted to take part in the Czech initiative for purchasing military supplies after the Slovak government declined to participate. In total, 70,000 Slovaks raised almost 4.5 million euros. 2,700 rounds of 122 caliber arrived in Ukraine on six trucks. It took three weeks to raise the funds for this purchase. The Ukrainian Security Service demonstrated a combat operation of a new generation of Sea Baby drones. According to the service, these drones, which were funded by Ukrainian civilians, are already being used to perform active combat missions. The release footage shows a Marine drone with a multiple rocket launcher attached, practicing on Russian positions on the Kinburn Spit. The security service's new Sea Baby drones are a multi-purpose platform. What does this mean? It means that this is not a classic suicide drone whose task is to find a target, hit it and explode. These are drones that perform missions and then return to the base. According to Dyakhtaryenko, using maritime drones, the security service of Ukraine also managed to hit 11 Russian warships, including missile carriers, which fired at the territory of Ukraine. The fire continues to burn in Feodosia, where Ukrainian forces successfully targeted a major oil depot back on October 7th. Days later, the terminal remains ablaze, with additional footage surfacing on October 9th. The self-proclaimed government in Moscow announced an evacuation of the nearby region on October 8th, with more than a thousand people being relocated. As of now, the wind has carried the fire to the remaining oil tanks and is getting stronger by the hour complain the local residents. Ukrainian fighters targeted a Russian $60 million Kasta radar system in a precision strike in the Luhansk region. Footage was released by the Tornelis official YouTube channel, showing the total annihilation of the Russian high-tech Kasta 2E surveillance radar, NATO codenamed Flatface E. One truck from the system carries the antenna and its peripheral equipment while another operates as a command post vehicle. The external power supply is installed from a trailer unit. That's it for today. We are United 24 Media. Thank you for being with us and see you on Friday.